and you'd sooner or later I'd have the proof. But I got the proof much quicker than I expected because here in New Zealand, a guy, he's actually a Chilean tourist, has been arrested and charged with endangerment because he flew a drone in the vicinity of an area where eight helicopters were fighting a wildfire. Now, there's a lot of stuff that's unclear so far. I mean, that you can't, as I say, you can't believe the authorities, you can't believe the media. False news is the currency of the day. It's even more common than Bitcoin. So you can't believe anything anyone says, so you're going to try and read between the lines. So I'm going to simply say, well, I'm just working on what I have read and what I've been told. I cannot verify these facts. I wasn't there, and I haven't spoken firsthand to the people who were. So please take some of this with a grain of salt. But I'm going to draw some long bows and do some speculation here. But first thing that we do know for sure is the police arrested this guy and confiscated his drone after the pilot, one of the pilots or one or more of the pilots of the helicopters fighting the fire saw the drone. When he saw the drone, the helicopters were grounded for 15 minutes while the police came along and, you know, locked, you know, basically arrested the guy, took the threat away. Now, first point of note here is that this guy was a tourist from Chile. And I can bet you a million dollars that he wasn't given this brochure when he came through the airport. Now, I've said to CAA on numerous occasions, many of the people who responded to CAA's survey that they conducted online recently said unequivocally, you must and educate tourists coming to this country because they are the biggest problem area. They're the biggest single risk are tourists who don't know the rules coming with their drones and creating problems. And I've said, give this to everyone who gets off a plane in New Zealand, or at least put a stack of them there so that people with drones can pick one up as they come into the country, read it at their leisure, and know that what they're doing is safe and legal within the framework of our regulations. But they don't do it yet. It's not done. I mean, I did this years ago. I suggested this to the CAA. Still haven't done a thing. Too expensive, apparently. So, using my brain, which is, you know, I've got one. Not all bureaucrats have got them, but I've got one. I said, well, if it's too expensive, why don't you just get a big banner printed with a QR code on it so that when people come off the airport, just have, if you have a drone in your luggage, you know, please visit this QR code so they can get their phone, go click, and it will download this in PDF form onto their phone. It won't cost you any more than just having a banner positioned at the entry or immigration control point where you get off the plane, right? A single banner. There, anyone can take a photo with their phone and get this on their smartphone. Why not? Why don't you do that? Is it? I mean, I've, you agreed it's a really good idea, but you haven't done it. Why not? I mean, regulators are there to make rules, but also they're there. They have to promulgate these rules. The rules have to be promulgated. If you know you have a big problem with tourists, why are you ignoring the potential and the ideas I've given you to educate them as they get off the plane so we don't have Chilean tourists flying in a manner which, which is allegedly endangers the lives of helicopter pilots trying to fight a wildfire. So I put the blame on this pretty much squarely at CAA's doorstep. CAA, you could have educated this Chilean tourist when he got off the plane, but you chose not to. So you should be before the beak as, as, long, as well as this Chilean guy. You know, you, you have a responsibility to educate and inform, and that was made very clear in the survey, but you're still ignoring it. What's going on? Going, you're treating this like it's a game. It's not. It's serious stuff. Lives are at risk, and you're not doing your job properly. And I don't say that lightly. I am serious. You're not doing your job properly. You're not educating people. Um, you put up a website and say, visit the website. <laughs> no. Most people I don't even know the web. If you come to New Zealand, you don't even know the website's there. So let's be serious. Right. Let's move on more about the story. Now, Airways, which is the airspace management company, that's the, not the regulator, CAA is the regulator. CAA makes up the rules, Airways manages the airspace. So they're the people who do all the air traffic control for airliners and, and so forth, and they issue NOTAMs if there's a, a, something that pilots need to know about. So they are in charge of making sure the airspace is used uh, safely. Now, they recently published a press release on their website and to the media, which was widely carried by the media. And I'm going to quote a bit from it here. It was on the 13th of December last year. Yeah, which is like less than a month, a month ago, they published a press release. I'll, I'll read a little extract from it here. It says, With Airmap's free iOS and Android apps, drone users will be able to seek necessary airspace and public landowner approvals to fly, file flight plans, and access real-time information about other aircraft in the area, allowing them to stay safely separated, right? Okay, so this app sounds like the best thing since sliced bread. If you get this app, you'll know when there's other aircraft in the area, and you'll know if it's safe to fly, whether, whether there's approvals for this area to fly in, woohoo, what could go wrong? Well, do you remember my last vlog when I said, unless it's 110% accurate and up to date, it's a bad thing. And guess what? I got an email last week from someone who said, hey, 
Uh, did you realize that the AirMap system does not automatically download NOTAMs from Airways? Now, as I say, Airways is the company that issues the NOTAMs. And normally pilots go to the Airways website and they can read the NOTAMs for a specific area if they're planning to fly there. The AirMap app is supposed to advise you. Let me read it again. Let me read that part of the press release again. It provides an in and provides access to real-time information about other aircraft in the area, allowing you to stay safely separated. So you would expect, you would expect that if you're in an area where there is a firefighting operation and there are a whole lot of helicopters buzzing around at relatively low altitudes, that if you have an app which is supposed to inform you of other aircraft, it would tell you on the app, especially if the app is being pushed like hell by the airspace manager the airspace administrator saying, ooh, download our app and be safe. So you'd expect you've downloaded the app, you've got it there, woohoo, if there's helicopters fighting a fire here, it's going to tell me. Well, it's not. And apparently it didn't. Apparently, this is what I've been told, the NOTAMs are not automatically downloaded onto the EMAP system, therefore they're not going to appear on your smartphone. You don't get the NOTAMs on the smartphone. So this Chilean tourist, even if he had this app, even if he'd followed the recommendations of the airspace manager and downloaded the app and used the app, he still would not have been advised that there was probably a NOTAM in place requiring aircraft to stay clear of the firefighting operation.